<laughs> Man, I can't wait to see. He he free he freeze froze it right there in VMix for you to see. Oh. <laughs>
ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to week number six of the Tech High School series. Today we got some rockety action right ahead of us, but first, Hot Sauce, my legendary co-caster, is here to bless us with his ultimate presence. Hot Sauce, how are you doing today? Oh, great pleasure. Thank you. Great to be back in the booth with you, my friend. I know we've got uh, originally four scheduled games today. Unfortunately, that last game did have to reschedule, so... Three exciting Division One Rocket League games coming up. I know we've got Penn Trafford taking on Uniontown for our first game. And uh, we'll get these standings tossed up on the screen here for you as well. So you can kind of have an idea where some of these uh, teams stand as the season has gone. Like I said, Penn Trafford, Uniontown going to be that first game. Penn Trafford 2-2. Two two. Uniontown 0-3 oh yet to get their first win. What else we got for the rest of the day, Flater? Sheesh. Oh, my God. I was just looking at a great little tuna. 5-0 oh, win-loss ratio here on Division 1. They're killing it here in D1 and over on D2 as well. Laurel Highlands doing pretty much the same. But for the rest of the day here, we got Winberg going up against Richland. And to end it all off, it's going to be California going up against Bishop Guilfoyle. Yeah, California 4-0 and as well. So uh, another very, very strong team that we'll see a little bit later. I know Winbird has yet to get a win on the season. Richland just has one. So I think we're going to have a very close game in our second matchup as well. But uh, nonetheless, I'm excited for this first one again. Penn Trafford 2-2 two two on the season. Uniontown, unfortunately, is 0-3. So uh, I better believe that uh, they're definitely going to be hungry for their first win. Oh, definitely. You need the win here. But going up against Ben Trafford, it's a bit of a tough task. But hot sauce, we are well into the season. These teams have had plenty of opportunities to improve, to play against tougher opponents and watch the ward and learn how they can do better. So it would be good to see Uniontown make some really good plays today. Yeah, I mean, they're definitely going to have a tough game ahead of them. But, uh, you know, these teams have had a chance to review some VODs and, and grow over the season as well. So we'll see, you mm -hmm. know, what they're able to do against this tough team, but certainly not out of reach as well. We've seen some crazy upsets already this season as well. So as we get a little bit clo closer to these playoffs, uh, you know, I expect to see these uh, these players on their best performance, so to speak. Once again, the top eight teams will be competing in the playoffs here to determine who is going to be the spring split champion of the Tech High School Series Rocket League. I got my hopes up. for We got plenty of great teams this time. Greater Altoona, Forest Hills, Penn Trafford, every single one of these teams extremely capable of taking that first prize. But Hot Sauce, you know what would be more exciting to see? Maybe one of the lower teams take up that first prize oh yeah you want to see a, a big upset i you know i'm always oh, a yeah. fan of the I underdogs so uh you know maybe union town can pull up an upset here as we get everybody loaded onto the field and we should have that game here for you any moment now it looks like we're loaded in now so uh with that being said flater let's get it going let's get it going game one of the best of five series penn trafford going up against union town we got rye starting us off here in his own corner Trying to keep control of this ball here, and Ben Trafford, you know, this is what they've done for most of the Tech High School series. Take control, shoot the ball on target, and make it look beautiful. And look at that, Rai, starting us off strong here with Ben Trafford taking the very first goal. Yeah, I mean, it didn't take him very long here. We can see Burb with that touch to the center there, and I believe it was, uh, was it Dr. Blowhorn, or what did I see come up there? <laughs> not even sure who scored All that goal. All kinds of stuff. Oh my god, oh my. Okay. what's going on here, Flater? Not even another couple seconds and already another goal off the kickoff this time. Going for that speed kickoff, you can see him flipping into it and, uh, well, just taking advantage of uh, that, that extra skill they seem to possess at the moment. Well, that is a two-goal lead hot sauce in just a matter of 20 seconds. Ben Trafford, they're starting us off strong here. Uniontown, they haven't had a lot of opportunities to make their, some, a lot of possession plays. Reacted Egg, as we've seen him before, has been one of the more mechanically skilled players of Uniontown. Let's see if he can pull off some great plays here. We got Zoretic Kid now. Currently in possession of the ball, pinches it towards the blue net. Xavier's there to make a save. But they've got to work harder to get this out of their own corner. Reacted Egg looking for a pass down center. Oh, a bit of an own goal. Zoretic Kid goes for the drift. And it's going to take it to the sidewall. Xavier says no. This is going towards the back of the net. A huge save coming in from the blue side. Coming in from Uniontown, but it's not going to last long. Penn Trafford take yet another. Yeah, I, and again, I, I will just quickly say that I am liking this NRG uh, skin from Reacted, but uh, 
right now. Penn Trafford, uh, you know, it, it, it's it's crazy because they're only two and two on the season, right? They must have had some tough games, maybe some some single mishaps, but uh, they're showing you why they're so talented. We constantly see the great mechanical ability, phenomenal rotations as well. And well, right now up three to nothing and really not even close to a halfway point. There's reactive though to put one on the board. Exactly what you need here a minute into this game here. Union Town finally finds some footing with themselves. It's reacted Egg throwing himself onto the ball. And to be honest, the gamble worked. They got the first goal. And with that, the kickoff in front of us once more will be stalled out at midfield, but will power on through as Pin Trafford fires to the net wide and to the left, carrying around Dr. Blowhorn right in front of the net once more and will score yet again. Great quick response coming in from Penn Trafford this time. It's Rai coming off the side wall with a bit of a doomsday dish. Ends up bouncing it into the top of the net. Union Town left wondering how that went in. Penn Trafford once again in a three goal lead. Yeah, I mean, I, again, they're just really scoring at will. They don't have uh, very many issues scoring. So it's kind of going to be on Uniontown to match that pace if they're unable to find these stops. So, again, they need to apply a little pressure here, see if they can maybe find a demo or two and try to start padding the score up. Oh, got to be careful from that angle. Burb comes in, takes advantage, capitalizes on the play and takes the fifth goal four goal lead now for Ben Trafford and the, it's not even been 120 seconds into this game hot sauce yeah like I said I mean they're pretty much just scoring at free will at the moment Uniontown doesn't seem to have an answer they had a nice goal there but I, I feel like right now Penn Trafford is that more aggressive team. We see them going up for nearly every ball. They're in the air. They're controlling the boost, the tempo of the game as well. So I'd like to see Uniontown maybe quicken the pace a bit, be a little more aggressive with a nice shot here. And they will find the net once more. And this is what Uniontown needs to do. It's not too late in this game yet. So if they can find these early goals and maybe set themselves up for a comeback here late in the game. Yeah, they've only got a three goal deficit to beat and they've got almost more than half the game remaining in front of them. So let's find out if they can make it work. Paul on the blue side now. Burp looking to pick this one up. That's not the best first touch. Reacted Egg almost shoots it to the back of the net here. Xavier comes in with a save. Burp picking this one up here in the corner. Does not have a lot of boost to work with. But he's going to take a sweet time with the ball. Trying to catch his boost as well. Going to go high up into the air off the side wall. If you're looking for a pass, decide to let it go. A shot opportunity coming in for Reacted Egg. Rai, a.k.a. Dr. Blohan, comes in with a save. Yeah, you know, maybe you can... I was kind of curious about that, Flater, is, is so we see Rai on the bottom left, but over his car you see Dr. Blowhorn. So at first I was almost confusing myself, thinking there might be a fourth man out there somewhere, and Pin Trafford certainly <laughs> playing like they have a fourth man, already up 5-2, to two, a little bit past that halfway part as we see Reacted trying to play some defense here, looking for that push outward. And again, a bit of a double commit coming from Uniontown. Doesn't quite haunt them this time, but now into the corner of Penn Trafford, Reacting, trying to carry out the clear can't quite be taken as again Uniontown now knocking at the net a little bit of luck is definitely needed here for Uniontown time is ticking and with a minute and 40 seconds remaining they do have a chance of making the comeback but with the way Penn Trafford is playing at the moment this is gonna be tough to pull it off taking possession here is big enough of a challenge especially against a team like Penn Trafford here they go again it's Burb off the corner, looking for the second touch. Great touch, for, great first touch coming in from Uniontown, but a second one doesn't come through. And the ball still rolling around here in the orange corner. Rye looking to pick this one up. Maybe a double touch attempt goes a little too wide. Uniontown given yet another opportunity on the counter. Now reacted, trying to find the clear, but gets the ball taken away. Now floating near the front of the net. A nice shot here from Dr. Blowhorn, and he puts one more in. Six to two, Penn Trafford up on top, and that might just secure the deal for them here in game number one. Game number one looking to slip away at the moment from the hands of Union Town as Penn Trafford have secured a six goals here in the first game and currently are sitting at a four goal lead. Burb does not want to stop there. He's looking for a bit of an air dribble. Go flips away from it, but that's a, still a pretty good pass over to Xavier who hits the top bar and that's still going to result in Penn Trafford keeping possession 
And with every single touch they've been making on the ball here, that is a precious time being taken away from Uniontown. Yeah, they're just doing a good job again of controlling the pace, the tempo, the ball possession, the field domination, everything seeming to be in their favor at the Ooh. moment. 35 on the clock, and well, Uniontown once more knocking at the door, but even if they find this goal later, there really isn't a whole lot of time on the clock. Four goals in 24 seconds. I mean, it may not be impossible, but it's really insanely, uh, highly unlikely. So Uniontown has to take the two goals they had. Maybe they can sneak one more in, but again, they have to try to work on, you know, what worked in game one and see if they can kind of amplify that in game number two. I mean, even taking a consolation goal here would be a little something for Uniontown because you need that confidence going into the second game, right? Especially against a team like Penn Trafford, that is so momentum-driven. Burb coming in with yet another shot on target, goes high up into the air, shoots the ball as quickly and as smoothly as possible, giving Penn Trafford that five-goal lead here as the game number one is nearing its end. Uniontown opportunity for a second goal, for a third goal rather, goes dry as dry. Goes up into the air, drop the ball, drops the ball down at zero seconds. And Penn Trafford take game one. Yeah, seven to two, a great game by Penn Trafford here, as you can see, uh, just all across the board. Rye with the hat trick there as well. A couple key saves coming in. Really on the other side of things, though, just a couple demos there, only a couple goals as well. And uh, I'm kind of surprised by the the ball possession and the field domination numbers because in my mind, Penn Trafford was really controlling that. But here we see that, you know, the field domination is in the favor of Uniontown, the ball possession just 1% off, and even the boost consumption in their favor. So, the score really does kind of surprise me here as we begin to look at some of these numbers. I guess looking at these stats, it does make sense that Penn Trafford has been playing a bit of a counter-driven game. We see Uniontown committing way too much up into the field, and that is when they strike. Penn Trafford, they strike multiple times and in places where it hurts the most. You're making multiple goal leads look, look like it's child's play. Yeah, well, we knew Uniontown was going to have a tough time, too, with this Penn Trafford team. They play very, very well together. There's returning members from the previous roster. And it just goes to show from that first game, we saw great, uh, you know, air mechanics, uh, just phenomenal rotation, really very minimal double commits as well. So if Penn Trafford continues right. to play this game, I feel like Uniontown is going to have a pretty tough time. It is going to be a bit of a challenge going up against one of the best teams here in Division One. Uh, let's see if game number two... Is going to bring us a different result. I'm just about ready to head on into this one. But, I, you know, I do feel like Rye played a huge factor on that offense. Just being able to take the ball away from Uniontown and shooting it as quickly as he possibly can. So speed is a bit of a factor that it is a challenge that Uniontown faces here. So let's find out if they can counter it differently. Yeah, you know, and again, I think maybe some demos could help out Uniontown. But again, time will tell as we get loaded in here. But, uh, I mean, is there something that maybe you saw later they could do differently here to kind of help them in this game? I mean, we did see some opportunities coming in from Uniontown to being able to take the ball to the other side, but keeping the ball to themselves is just as important here. Taking possession and making sure that the shots that you're making are threatening enough for Penn Trafford players to go up and actually make a save rather than the possession just being given away and t Penn Trafford takes it as a Christmas present. Yeah, well, we know Penn Trafford is definitely going to be hungry for these wins as well. As we get a little closer to playoffs, obviously everybody wanting to get the best possible seed that they can for their team, for their school. So, mm -hmm. uh, again, Penn Trafford doing a great job in game number one. Uh, I'm not sure if there's some difficulties here that they're ironing out in the back end of thing, but, uh, you know, hopefully this stall out doesn't, uh, you know, put some ice on Penn Trafford for too long. But, again, they're just playing very well together as a team. They have in the past as well. So it's really nothing new here for Penn Trafford. Absolutely. It is a day in the park for them so far. Let's see if Uniontown can make them uncomfortable because that is where it starts. Making sure that you're inside your enemy's head. And that is how Uniontown can get it ready to take games against Penn Trafford. Right now, heading into the second game here, we got a ball possession in Penn Trafford's hands. Uh, you know, it must have been these wonderful producers in the background fixing that name down there for us. Rye now corrected to Dr. Blowhorn. You can see on your screen as we get ready for game number two in this Pastel 5 series. And already, Dr. Blowhorn with a little razzle-dazzle to find goal number one for game number two. 
Quick touch coming in from Dr. Flohan there. Bird was even looking for a demo in case. Zeratic Kid was in the right position, however, it was needed. Penn Trafford securing the very first goal here and keeping that momentum from game number one going. Ball bouncing off the ceiling, now tucked into the wall as well and reacted, will look to settle, has a nice flick, but into the wall and again, plowed over by his own teammate. And really you cannot be fighting your own teammates for the ball. It's those little mistakes like that that are gonna come back to haunt you. And when you're playing an incredibly talented team like Penn Trafford, they are certainly gonna capitalize nearly on every mistake you make. And they're so fast with taking these possessions again. Even after mistakes, it doesn't matter. Uniontown, however, are going to be getting a bit of a breakaway as the Reddit kid looks to pass this down. Center's a pretty good touch. Reacted egg passes it over to the third man. But Kilo just not ready for that one. Blowhorn was shot on target. Oh, Xavier trying for the double. And it does not get any more smoother than that. Would you look at that coming in from Xavier? Pops the ball up high into the air. Goes into the corner. Makes the double. Yeah, just takes the second goal. It's almost frightening how the mechanics of these players bring them these goals. Yeah, I mean, the defense was right there in the face as well, but Xavier was not letting that one go silently into the night and now already pressuring once more on that counterattack, but Berg can't get the clear they need. We'll follow through with a secondary demo here as he makes a play in the backfield. The ball settling at midfield, chipped up by the teammate, now carrying by Xavier, looking Ooh. for the second double tap, can't quite get it. And now the clear from Uniontown, they cannot find a way to alleviate this pressure. Pin Trapper once more knocking at the door. Oh, he's looking to do it again. And at this point, I'm not even surprised, Xavier. With those kind of mechanics, you can take double touches for days and secure 90% of those shots, Burb. Coming in with a bit of a lob shot on target. Goes wide. Possession still maintained by Penn Trafford at the moment. Union Town should be able to get this breakaway right here. Reacted. I'm going to pass this down. Center's a pretty good touch. However, the second man just not ready for the speed on that ball that Penn Trafford was able to create with such little momentum on their side. Now Xavier. Possession. Completely on his side here at the moment trying to dribble it across all three players and that is not something that you can run away with that easily possession now in favor of union town bit of a 50 coming in from the union town side could have almost gotten them a goal but pen trafford make the save and they continue to maintain the two goal lead yeah, a really nice shot by react and unfortunately it does get taken away now on the counter attack kylo looking to chip this one up and find the clear Penn Trafford does get bumped away from the ball here. Now reacted egg into the corner. Finds a touch across midfield. Ooh, looking to put it in careful. front of the net. Flirting with disaster. Can't find the net bow. Do they have backup? And there it is. That Zoretic kid comes in to find the goal. And this is what they need. They can't allow these opportunities to slip away. I like how they're just attacking this net. Each member rotating out, finding that shot on goal. We'll see if Uniontown can step it up now. Only down by one, a little less than halfway through. One good touch is all you need to scatter the defense here on the Penn Trafford side and Uniontown. They can take the they can take the surprising element here. They can take the surprising element and start running away with it. However, those accurate shots need to come through. But as of right now, the chances of them happening are few and far between at the moment. As Union Town look to take possession right back. Blowhorn passes this down center over to the second man. However, a bit of a back pass results in Burb in the exact same position. Zeretic Kid looking to dribble this one across the field and gets it past one. However, Burb looks to take it under control reacted egg is there to make a play looking for a pass down center the pass is good however blowhorn takes it away sends it into the other corner and is looking for the counter yeah a great job to take that ball away and honestly a really nice attempt by uniontown they have some solid passing plays they're really looking much more like a cohesive team at the moment blowhorn with a nice flick over the head not one but twice now carrying it down look at the channel is inner lionel messi but the defense will Thwart this play away at midfield. Blown Horde can't find the touch they need. And now Uniontown making a solid counter attack here. A big demo coming in. And now Burb the other direction. One defender to beat off the backboard. The teammates are there, but just a little over the head. And now the counter attack coming in from Union. 
We got Savior on the ball here. He does get it past one. Has a lot of boost to work with to cut this in, which he does. And Blowhorn is ready to secure the second goal lead right back into the hands of Penn Trafford. What a clean touch coming in from Xavier. Cuts it in, gets the bump, takes the goal for Penn Trafford. Yeah, that's the tough thing about, you know, if you're playing against Ben Trafford is they are consistently good. So even if you find that goal, you have to play well the entirety of the game or a team like Ben Trafford, unfortunately, will make you pay later. And they always have, they continue to push this against them. Another touch coming in from Burb here with a bit of an aerodynamical play coming in from the Pin Trafford side as all the players go up into the air. Burb makes the softest of the touches to get it past all of the defenders of Union Town taking the three goal lead with only 30 seconds remaining. It has to be a miracle. Yeah, unfortunately, that Zeretta kid had a good attempt but just couldn't quite get up high enough to stop that one and well now, with just 23 seconds left on the clock. Most likely won't be able to come back in this one. Maybe they can steal another goal or two and just try to perpetuate oh that Oh my God, look at that by Xavier, game, so smooth. Yeah, this, okay. I mean, they, they, this whole, this whole Penn Trafford squad, you know, is capable of scoring at any given moment. And, you know, you might be <sighs> saying Dr. Blowhorn's name for the entirety of game one. Now we've got Xavier popping off. We saw some solid double taps as well. And, it just goes to show you the repertoire, the skill that they have uh, on this team. I mean, every single player showing up for themselves, uh, they are, they're able to carry their own weight and produce more burp coming in with a phenomenal save as the clock is nearing the final few seconds. Xavier takes this one up high and I believe 5-1 might just be the scoreline that we end at here unless Burb has something to offer. No, he does not. Penn Trafford still managed to take game number two with a 5-1 scoreline. Yeah, and again, we see this time it was Penn Trafford who did have that ball possession and that field domination. Uniontown keeping it fairly close, though, and I feel like maybe the scoreline doesn't do it justice. It's just that Penn Trafford is, it does a great job at these counterattacks. I think Uniontown, sometimes when they're attacking, maybe that third man just cheating a little too far forward, uh, kind of giving Penn Trafford some of these uh, easier goals on that counterattack. Of course, Dr. Blowhorn, Xavier, always up in the air, uh, making phenomenal plays. So it, it's hard to stop a team like that unless you're, you're being aggressive, you're finding bumps, you're finding demos, you're making sure that you're challenging that ball in the air. And I mean, it all starts with Penn Trafford taking a, taking the ball away at the kickoff side of things, right? They get the kickoff in their favor and they just continue to shoot the ball again and again with Uniontown getting just a few attempts here and there in the middle. If they can start, if they can start taking control at the very start of the game itself, taking possession away at the moment of kickoff, which once again, easier said than done. But if they, if they can possibly pull it off here, we might have, have ourselves a game. Yeah, and Uniontown just making just some minor mistakes, honestly, that's allowing these goals to happen. So just a little bit smarter rotations and honestly, maybe some more team comms. We, we have seen, uh, you know, several double commits coming in. So if they can just kind of minimize those those simple mistakes, I really think that they're capable of taking a game or two away from Penn Trafford. Unfortunately, Penn Trafford is just looking hot today. I mean, 7-2 <laughs> game one, 5-1 uh, in game two. They, they're on fire, so it, it's get, certainly going to be a tough task at hand, nonetheless, for Uniontown. Absolutely. You know, we talk about the underdogs heading into the heading into the season, how a lo a more more games they play against tougher opponents, the better they get. But this is a, this is a similar case for the good teams as well. They continue to practice. They continue to improve. And that is the result of what we see here. Penn Trafford playing a phenomenal game so far. And let's find out if they can continue the streak here in game number three. Yeah, if Ben Trafford can clutch up game number three, they will go ahead and finish it off here with a clean sweep. Uniontown, though, holding on, not ready to be done yet as we head into game number three of this best of five. And Dr. Blowhorn already trying to put some spizzazz on at the flick off. Now into the back wall, reacted, will find the touch. And Right here, we see Burb waiting at the midfield, and this is what Penn Trafford does just a little bit better, right? They have these third mans in good positioning so that when Uniontown goes for these clears, they already have someone there capable of keeping that ball down on this Uniontown side. And so far, Uniontown might just be able to produce some results here. Zoretic Kid finds an open net, and ain't no way he's letting this golden opportunity go away here. Starting off game number three with a bang, it's Zoretic Kid taking a goal for Uniontown. My, oh my, so 
all i mean this is what you talked about right flater uh i mean you wanted to see them come out early you wanted to see them be aggressive and, and take control early so uniontown doing that consistency being key though flater can they hold on for the entirety of the game holding on is one of the more difficult tasks that uniontown has faced so far especially in those leads which finally they were able to get here and so far they're doing a pretty good job in keeping Ben Trafford on the defensive side I like what I see here from reacted egg unfortunately a bit of a whiff there will result in the breakaway that that Pen Trafford needed to head on to the other side so Radikid looking for the clear he will find it keeping the one goal lead intact now pressuring out here off of this clear trying to find that counter attack with the ball floating around midfield once more, Uniontown doing a good job of applying and keeping the pressure at the moment, but nobody here to challenge Dr. Blowhorn, looking for that aerial control across midfield to the teammates, but the boost has gone for both Burb and Blowhorn as they look to recollect and now progress toward the Uniontown net. Up oh, high, trying to leave them dry. Once more off the backboard, though, and now that's a Redicate on the counterattack. This one's going to slip by just to the right, and they nearly get another goal later. I'm loving all the new energy that Uniontown has have had there in game number three. And they maintain it though, that is the bigger question. Penn Trafford not being able to secure a lot of shots on target anymore. Keeping possession to themselves is one of the more challenging tasks that they're facing right now. Uniontown doing such a great job in maintaining this pressure. Here they go once, a, once again, looking to get this pass down center. It's a pass pretty good, and Kilo almost made the shot on target. Blowhorn coming in with an amazing save right in front of the goal line. Now on the counter, tries to flick it over one, but they're unhinged, ready to hit the blue net again. And I'm loving how aggressive this Uniontown team is. I mean, yes, they give up a goal here, but they are fighting for these balls. They are making it much tougher for Penn Trafford. And uh, to be honest, I'm loving what I'm seeing here from Uniontown. Hopefully they can keep up this high-paced action for the majority of the game. They can certainly take this away from Penn Trafford. And they have showed us that they're extremely capable. Half the game gone here, but the kickoff goal coming in from Penn Trafford might just be a bit of a nail on the backside. Getting a goal here for Penn Trafford means Uniontown will once again have to play on the deficit. Yeah, that's unfortunate, but those things do happen in Rocket League, so... Just take a deep breath, reset, and continue to play your game. Already knocking out the net here once more. A bit of a double commit from Penn Trafford, but somehow still able to save that one. Now, once more, knocking at the net. It's wide open, and Reacting Egg will find it again, applying the pressure. A relentless fire squad in Uniontown will find goal number two and the equalizer. Well, we got a bit of a disconnect coming in from Penn Trafford. Now, I'm not sure. Will they take advantage of this? Let's find out soon enough. Oh, oh they're not no. able to. That is unfortunate. Oh. That is so unfortunate here. Penn Trafford, even while being a player down in the confusion, managed to take that one goal lead. Yeah, that is unfortunate. I don't know if maybe they were just trying to wait for the other player to get back or what was going on, but still down by a player, able to sneak in a goal. The player has loaded back in. Two minutes on the clock. Penn Trafford up by one, looking to close out the series here in game number three. Uniontown looking to keep the drive alive. A minute and 58 seconds remaining here. Kilo looking to equalize the series. Bobs with an incredible save. And Xavier is looking to follow this one through as well. Off the sidewall. Bounces down, picks it up, Burb, an opportunity for an air dribble, here he goes up into the air, hits the back of the net, almost does hit it, but reacted egg will be making that save here right in front of the goal line, Dr. Blowhorn blown away by the bump here, physical plays could be the name of the game, let's find out can they continue it through, Penn Trafford maintaining that one goal lead and all they gotta do is hold us down for a minute and 20 seconds more. Yeah, here they go, though. Uniontown down on this Penn Trafford side, trying to make things happen. But now a big counterattack. Nobody in that net. We'll see Kylo able to get back in time, playing it off the wall. Can't find a booming touch, though. And with that, more pressure being applied from Penn Trafford. Reacting Egg with a nice move. A wide open net, but he can't get there in time. And that one nearly slips away. But again, the pressure being applied by Uniontown. I absolutely love it. 
Oh, Dr. Bluehorn, here he goes once again, trying to extend that lead, but Uniontown, they're still pretty much in this game. Only a one goal deficit at the moment can easily be taken away. Here we see Reacted Egg going off the side while not being able to carry the ball through, though. That will result in more time taken away. Bluehorn goes up into the air, gets it past one. He's looking for the second touch, doesn't find it. Pressure is still on, though. And so far, it's still pretty much on the Uniontown side. Ball... In the corner, reacted eh? looking to take this one up away, bounces it into the air. Xavier sends it over to the other side of the field here. A bit of an ambitious ceiling shot attempt, but Blowhorn might be looking to make another one here. Will this result in a bit of a breakaway? Union Town has a lot of space to work with. Reacted Egg comes in with a pass down oh. center. However, Xavier will get the final touch, send it into the corner. And as the clock has zero seconds, it's going to be Penn Trafford ending the series here in game number three. Yeah, Penn Trafford with the clean sweep. And, you know, the first couple games were a little rough, but Uniontown looking like a solid, formidable team in game number three. And honestly, very close to taking that away from Penn Trafford. Uh, you know, we see the stats and, the, and honestly, the domination ball possession fairly equal. Uh, but again, Uniontown just not able to take this one away from Penn Trafford. But they were so close coming into this one. Game number three being so close between Penn Trafford and Uniontown to think a team who are currently at the lower side of the scoreboard would be, poor, would be able to pose such a big challenge to a team like Penn Trafford goes to show the improvement that this team has had throughout the season. But this is going to be pretty much it for this series. We'll be back with a second one very, very soon. We've got a lot more Rocket League action. It's going to be oh, Winberg going up against Richland I, up next. I'm going to cut you off just for a second there, Flater. I do apologize. Uh, we did get word in that, unfortunately, I don't know if maybe not all the students showed up or, or they're missing some players, but unfortunately, Winberg did have to forfeit game number two. So we do apologize. We're not going to be able to bring you game number two at the moment. So we do have a short break. Hopefully we can speed up things a little bit. But if not, it'll be a little bit longer break. But when we do come back, we will have that undefeated California team taking on Bishop Guilfoyle, guys. So stick around. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more Rocket League.
And we are back with the final game of the day here. It's going to be California going up against Bishop Guilfoyle. A couple, a couple of history between these two teams. you got California standing at 4-0 in the Division 1 standings with Bishop Guilfoyle currently sitting at 1-3. Still looking for the second win. Hot sauce. This is going to be a tough matchup. Yeah, but you know, I think if things are correct from what I'm hearing in the background, it may just be a little extra spicy because California might Ooh. only have two players on the field. So though they are undefeated on the season, it may be a two versus three that we witness. You know, and I had the pleasure of casting a two <laughs> v three earlier this season in which the two almost won, even taking a game to overtime. So, uh, you know, if there's a team that can do it, California, 4-0, it could be them. It absolutely could be. I mean, 4-0 in the current scoreline. Let's see how they do in a man-down situation. I guess this would be more of a fair matchup, considering if you're just looking at the stats. But we've already seen what teams, even with an 0-3 scoreline, are capable of. They, I mean, Penn Trafford was given a pretty good fight against Uniontown. California now going to be going up against Bishop Guilfoyle. We're currently at 1-3, but we're just about to get ready to get started here in the Special 5 series. Who... We'll take the win and we'll find out soon enough. Yeah, you know, and interesting enough, as we get closer to these playoffs, obviously California has most likely secured their spot being 4-0. and But, uh, you know, now being down a player, here's an opportunity for Bishop Guilfoyle to get an extra win on the season mm -hmm. uh, that they might not be able to steal away normally. So, uh, you know, if they could get this in 2-3, as we get a little closer to the uh, end of the season, they could find themselves in a better seed and, uh, you know, maybe progress better even in the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. And taking a win against California, even if you're playing a 2v3 counts, it, it helps in building up that confidence. And of course, you need as many wins as you possibly can in order to make it, make it into the playoffs. I believe top eight do make it to the playoffs. So let's find out if Guilfoyle has what it takes to win this three versus two against California area. It's once again still going to be a tough challenge. California area three of the, all the three players currently sitting at GC1 and GC2 in the Rocket League, some of the highest ranks. So it's going to be pretty tough. Hey, a win is a win. Take them any way you can get them, as I say. So uh, we'll see uh, as we get loaded out here on the field, hopefully very shortly. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, but again, I do believe it is going to be a three versus two. Yes, it is going to be a three v two indeed. Just waiting for the players to join in here. And yes, we have a game in front of us. California area ready to go in a two v three against Bishop Guilfoyle. All right. Well, let's see what they got. They're uh, going to put the skills to the test in already six seconds off the clock. Would you believe it? Exavo coming in with an early goal. And that is California area taking a lead here as quickly as they possibly can. Would you look at that? It's Exavo taking the first goal here with a bit of a lob shot coming in and already setting the pace of the game. And it's just 10 seconds into this one. Yeah, but, you know, if you're Guilfoyle as well, you say, oh, those things, crazy things can happen in the opening moments of a game. So Guilfoyle needs to take a deep breath, reset. They have the player advantage. They need to use that to a maximum. And, well, you know, I'd hate to really say it, but honestly, demos could be a huge, huge thing for them. How about that aerial control right there from Cade, though? Oh, an opportunity coming in for Bishop Guilfoyle, and they're going to take it with style. Kurt, great positioning coming in. From him, RTS puts this one down center as gently as he possibly can, and it's Guilfoyle taking that equalizer. Yep, up, uh, well, now one-to-one -one here. 30, what, two seconds off the clock, so already a couple goals in the bag. We'll see if California can continue to apply pressure as well, being a man down. You want to try to keep that off of your side of the field, and right now, Jordan pressing, trying to take this one off the wall. Not quite the touch they wanted, but it will fall back toward Xavo here, and it looks like California we will be on the back pedal once more. Oh, pretty good shot coming in from Kurt there. However, really Jordan. There he is, making the save again. I'm looking for a bit of a redirect as he passes this down center. And now, this is a bit of a two-man team, so setting up offensive plays continuously is going to be a bit of a challenge here for California area. However, they are going to be ad as adamant as they possibly can on the offensive side. Jordan comes in, subs out for his teammate. Xavo does get bumped, and that gives opportunity to Guilfoyle. 
make a shot on target for the little pumps coming in in the team players as well however they do end up taking the ball to the to the blue side Igzawo finally getting the touch he needs to send it flying over to the orange side here shot coming in from Jordan it's bar down and he is not able to close this one out Zawo puts another one on target but Matt YT is there to make the save Oh, and they are just knocking at the net, shot after shot, a relentless firing squad, the Hailstorm coming in, but again, Bishop Guilfoyle able to find the stop after stop, and now the counterattack, stalled out at midfield here by Xuavo, looking to carry forward, has a defender to beat, now the team rotating back into position, and again, California is going to have to strike quickly when they make these attacks, not allowing Bishop to get back in time. Big counterattack coming in, one to beat, but Xavo is going to find the stop here. A pretty good pass coming in from Yormad YT. Xavo picks this one up, sends it high up into the air, but look at that, Kadeth. Great positioning from him as he sends it right back onto the other side. California area, this is a bit of a challenge as they are a man down, but they've been able to hold their ground pretty well. That is half the game in, and we're still at an equalizing scoreline. Yeah, nice flick from Jordan there. Unfortunately, it can't make it past midfield. Kurt looking to find the counter. We'll settle down with a nice touch, but Jordan takes away, pops it up. One to beat Kadeth. We'll find the car to the ball as Xuavo tries to keep it alive down here. But again, taken away once more. Jordan at midfield, keeping it alive. A little bit of back and forth long here, Plater. Oh, Xavo is gonna finally going to take possession away off the sidewall. He goes. That's a pretty good touchdown center. But Kadeth takes the win in that 50. And he's in a great position to send this one into the back of the net. But the ball bounces high. And Kadeth will be forced to make a bit of a tough pass. Will result in California running away with a bit of an extra life yeah i mean again it, they got really lucky there that the ball kind of hit that wall and popped straight up and now on the counter attack suavo will find the score in california a man down but a point up Zavo, great positioning coming in from him jordan perfect pass to set up Zavo for this wonderful goal and of course, that one goal lead is not going away anytime soon. Exawa needs to make a save here, which he does. But, you know, I guess the caster skirts uh, really pulled out on this one. Kurt Push there to make the play and they equalize instantaneously. Yeah, it's, you know, Bishop has had a little bit of a tough time scoring against two, but it seems like any time that California scores, Bishop then answers almost immediately. So 93 seconds on the clock. California looking to go up by one now on the attack once more off the backboard Jordan looking to read this one a little high though and this one will sneak under RTS coming out now on that counter attack it's Wobble on the defense again and California has to be care very careful with their rotations here oh that's a boomer of a shot coming in from Kadeth as he picks this one up right as the ball bounces off the backboard sends it into the net and just like that the California lead has been subsided it's once again bishop guilfoyle running that one goal lead yeah 113 on the clock still plenty of time but it will be tough and again no one to challenge early here and well with that california kind of bumping into each other they will buy some time here in the corner though as kurt will take it away from teammate and slap kate away now on the counter attack once more able to get this one over the net though and carry it around the horn jordan looks to settle can't quite get the touch they need though and now bishop once more on the counter attack finding a big demo is jordan though and we'll see if maybe they can get a play off this and that's a pretty good touch coming in from california area but an even better save comes in from kurt bush skated running the demo in a 2v3 and that's gonna leave a bit of a trouble that's gonna leave california in a bit of a troublesome position as matt yt comes in with a bump of his own 30 seconds remaining california still down by one we are seeing a ton of demos and i absolutely love it but with 20 seconds on the clock california still needs to find a way to get one more goal if they want to send this into overtime bishop guilfoyle looking to close it out 10 on the clock kadeth up on top with the defense oh Same old opportunity fighters one just high though unfortunately in the second chance shot comes in from jordan well, it seems like the bumps and the demos are still not enough to stop California's wonderful aggression coming in in the final few seconds. And with only six seconds remaining here, we're all tied up in game one.
Yeah, I can't believe it. I think we might just have an overtime here in game one. Bishop Gilfo has done a good job of answering these goals right away and already knocking at the net. One on the clock. The ball will fall. Does it stall? And they nearly get it. But we're going to have our first overtime here. First overtime, first game of this best of five series. Kurt tries to take possession in a slow way as possible. But Jordan... Reads the play, sends it into the corner. We got Exavo picking this one up. Now they got to be careful of the banger coming in from Kadeth. However, he sends it a little too high. But that demo does mean danger. Exavo needs to play as patiently as he possibly can. Needs to buy his teammate as much time as he can. Has he done it? Ooh. Yes, he has. Jordan spawns back, makes the save. And Exavo is looking for a bit of a pinch of his own. Jordan's there to make the play. And this is California once again back on the offensive side. Yeah, some crazy plays there. Jordan able to get back just in time to find a phenomenal save as well. Exuavo looking to carry out. Jordan will find one more touch across midfield. And Kadith on that back pedal collecting more boost. A nice shot from Kurt. And I don't think California expected this. A great redirect here off the little flip. And Kurt just able to sneak this one in between defenders. Oh, Jordan just did not have enough boost to work with. And Kurt's bump. Over to the last man will result in Guilfoyle taking game one. And would you look at this hot sauce? We there is no way of telling who's gonna take the specify series. I mean, yeah, ideally on paper, you believe it's gonna be Bishop Guilfoyle. It's always hard to play with a man down, but California is certainly showing they're very capable of it. Seven saves between the two, three goals as well. And uh, again, a great job with ball possession and field domination, really keeping these stats very, very close. So again, California showing that they are certainly capable of winning this series, even with the man down. And what you look at that, even with the man down, building on that, we got 12 shots coming in from California here across those five minutes. So these guys are definitely capable of making these offensive plays as and when it matters the most. But Guilfoyle, they just got the longer end of the spear. Let's find out if game number two is going to prove any different because California area, once again, they do have what it takes to win this 2v3. Yeah, I think it just, you know, obviously we saw maybe just a couple minor mistakes from California. And, and normally that might be okay when you have that third man, but only having two there on the field, every little uh, mistake is going to penalize you. So uh, hats off to Bishop Guilford for making sure that they execute and capitalize on those opportunities. They certainly uh, can't afford to not capitalize because, again, mm -hmm. California will make you pay at every turn. And that's what they've done so far. Let's find out, however, if they can continue to do this here in game number two. California area starting us off strong here off the off the kickoff. You got Kurt taking possession. Xavo sends it up into the air. Gets the 50 against your man as well. Jordan, last man back. Needs to jump early for this one, which he does. The double touch has been prevented, but Xavo makes the crucial play to keep the possession in the hands of California area as they head right back onto the offensive side and it's only one man on offense the other is just chilling at the back of the back of the field here and i guess if the strategy does make sense you do not want to commit to both of your players especially at a disadvantage so california area area are playing this one with as much strategies as they possibly can yeah and it looks like bishop just kind of making sure they always have one tucked in the net which could potentially benefit California here as well. And I'm not sure what happened. I'm going to have to check the replay. Jordan somehow sneaks this one in, Flater. Quite surprisingly, Kurt decided not to move as the ball was just going past him. Maybe some kind of connection issue there. Yeah, but that is... The controller, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, you know, California area, they do not care. They're going to take the goal anyways because they're already playing at a bit of a disadvantage. So, one goal lead for California area. Let's find out if they can continue the streak. Jordan, this is a pretty good opportunity for a banger of a shot. Kadeth comes in with the save, sends it back onto the midfield. Uh, we're looking to pick this one up. A lot of boost to work with. Back flips, though. So, possession will go back into the hands of Guilfoyle. Sending us down center. The pass is pretty good, but Jordan's save is even better. Kate it. A lot of boost to work with. First touch, pretty good. Exavo says no more for you. Mad YT put a, puts a shot on target, but Jordan comes in with a clear. The second touch is leading in front of the orange net. Opportunity saved away by Kate it. And this is just a lot of back and forth between these two titans. 
Yeah, I think California just trying to play these counter attacks to the best of their ability as Xuavo fires a shot. Kadeth will get the stop, looks to carry out in the other direction here. Jordan tries to cut him off, has the chip over the head off the sidewall and an opportunity to carry for more will be met midfield though. Is the ball left high and dry from the 50, dangling around midfield. Kadeth looking to carry off the sidewall. Xavo now on the back pedal, has to be careful. You're mad, waiting patiently here at midfield for his opportunity to attack. But Zwalbo across midfield, off the banger of the crossbar. Jordan trying to put it in. Zwalbo is there as well, but they can't get the ball to fall into the back of the net and with regret back the other direction. Oh, that was a pretty dangerous clear coming in from Jordan, surprisingly. However, they still walk away with this possession play. Kated sends the ball flying back onto the other side. Possession in the offense has been maintained quite well for Guilfoyle so far. But they haven't been able to bring a continuous results. Jordan, lob shot on target, easily saved. But the second touch was pretty dangerous. Kated, however, still manages to slip this one away from the back of the net. Guilfoyle are looking for their first goal, but California's offense is making it impossibly hard at the moment. Yeah, big demo from your mad once more. So Xuavo will pressure, try to buy some time. Gets a demo here coming in once more. And now you're mad in front of the net, though. And a near miss. Kurt had the opportunity. This one just slips by. And somehow California dodges a bullet or a goal, but not for long because Caden will find the equalizer. 1.42 left here on the clock. Kated is quick, elegant double touch. He even, have, even had Kurt there as backup in case uh, he messed up the second touch here. But he didn't. The consistency is key for this team, and they have been able to produce results when it matters the most. Guilfoyle now equalized. Never mind. They've got the lead. Kated pulls in yet another shot on target off the kickoff, and that is Guilfoyle going up by one. You have two players on the field. You have to try and play the full five minutes with almost no mistakes. And unfortunately, Bishop Guilfoyle able to exploit one right there and find that lead now two to one. 95 seconds left on the clock. Kurt Bush flying through the air, looking for the pass. The Kate is off the top here and another near goal. Now the counterattack though, a near wide open net. You're mad, able to get back here in time though as we see California circling around once more, trying to find a plan of attack. Oh, Xavo, they're gonna push this one down center and Jordan's there to make a play. It's a bit of a banger here coming in from California area. And just like that, the lead that was easily taken by the hands of Bishop Guilfoyle has now once again been returned to nobody as California area is there to make the equalizer happen. Yeah, I mean, we have to give credit to this California team playing a player down and still playing very, very well so far. We'll see if maybe they can steal one of these games away. All tied up two to two here as we near that 60 second mark. Flirting with disaster once more in front of the net. Kurt pops it up, looks for the chip shot. Exuavo will at least find some car on car action so they can't connect with the ball, but the ball coming toward the net now and they have to be very careful. A bit of a double commit from California. Somehow, Exuavo able to play this one off the wall later. And quite surprisingly, they still managed to maintain possession. California area doing such a good job in the final moments of this game, and that is where they've shined before. Kated is looking to shine even brighter as he puts a shot on target. Exavo comes in with a very crucial save. Looking to pick this ball up, center down center. Can he pick this one for the second touch? Yes, he can. However, offense not maintained quite just yet. Kedis sends it back onto the midfield. 19 seconds remaining here, taking this possession in the final few moments of this final few moments of this game will prove detrimental for this victory. They almost secured a goal there, but it's Guilfoyle time on the offense. Exavo instantly takes it away, and we might just be looking at a game to overtime. Yeah, looking for one more opportunity here near in front of the net, but it will fall in another overtime we will have. So two games, two overtimes. Can California pull this one out? That is the question. Or will it be Bishop Guilfoyle taking two games in a row? It might just be the two games oh, in a row coming in for Bishop Guilfoyle. Kated with a bit of a scuffed double touch. However, it, if it works, don't fix it, right? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, unfortunately, that's just one of those things. It's like, well, this is Rocket League, right? That is, <laughs> this happens sometimes. So Bishop Guilfoyle will secure game number two. California playing very, very well for a player down, though. We'll see if somehow they can pull up an upset going into game number three. Even with just two players, California area managing to maintain 48% of the field domination. Ball possession, not so much, but they have had control of the field, and that's what matters the most. That is what have gotten them this close here in game number two. However, that is now Guilfoyle up by two games. So the next game is going to be a bit of a do-or-die situation here for California. Yeah, there was a couple big demos from Bishop there as well. And obviously when you're a player down and they eliminate one from the field, it makes things that mm -hmm. much tougher. So I feel like maybe if California comes out and, and finds themselves being equally aggressive, they do – you know, it seems like Bishop's kind of sitting one in the goal. So maybe find right. a pass off before you attack the net. Whoever passes it driving into the net, blow up that goalie as well. So uh, I think if we can get a little more aggressive play from California, easier said than done when you're a player down. But a little more aggressiveness uh, could go a long way for them. Yeah, but it is a bit of a double-edged sword, right? California area pushing in both of, with both of the players can prove quite risky. Like you said, easier said than done. So they'll have to look for a more efficient way of making the aggression known. Game number three, the final stand for California area. Kadith already has a great display of aerial mechanics uh, thus far on the day and just showing a little bit more there. You're mad. Discombobulated in the corner, though, as Zuavo tries to drive it in. Now back across midfield, Jordan, the lone member, has time to take their time and reset. We'll do just that as the ball kind of got away from him there. Been back and forth, popped up into the corner from Kurt. Jordan goes up. We'll find a nice subtle touch. Your mad will send it back the other way, and Jordan will pop it up. Zwabo was heading in for that one, so a bit of miscommunication on that California side. But we'll meet Kadith here and possibly win this 50. Your mad has the help. Zwabo getting bumped from the back, though, on the attack, and that is that. Come in here once more. Jordan pops this one up. Kurt looks to settle over the head of Xuavo on the back pedal now, looking and searching for that boost, but still a scoreless game here. So far, yeah, Jordan. Now, opportunity. Xuavo could be picking this one up, but Kadith comes in with the clutch. That's a pretty good answer. We're looking for this double touch. Can he make it happen? That's a pass down over to Kurt, but momentum is not something in his back pocket, and it will be... Once again, an opportunity for California area to pull off this double touch. We've seen this before coming in from Ben Trafford, but they've been not able to pull off the same storyline right here. Mechanics looking still pretty good for the California area side, but can't maintain possession. Not for much longer as Xavo is running out of boost here. Will not be winning this 50. Kadith gets it past one. Jordan sticks around. You get the second touch, it's pretty crucial. Igzawa comes in with a bit of a play, but might just be an impatient one. Askatis has an open net, he sends it over to Kurt, and that's a shot on target. First goal coming in for Bishop Guilfoyle. Yeah, that's unfortunate. If you are going to attack that ball, you certainly have to make sure you connect and connect with power, or that will happen nearly every time. The wide open net, a nice easy pass. Nothing too fancy or flashy, just put it right past me. And with that, Bishop Guilfoyle up by one. Now maintaining that a one goal lead is going to be the question here. Kurt, we see him on the offensive side at the moment, races the ball up high here and even getting a few physical aggressive plays could mean a lot. We see, do see him trying, however, lack of momentum and boost has a result of him in a bumpless position. Wabo will chip this one up and over, but again, the ball kind of getting away from him and really kind of having to play off of these counter attacks and missed opportunities from Bishop. Looking for the double touch here off the sidewall, a nice pass to themselves, but the play will be read early here from Bishop Guilfoyle. Jordan trying to find the flick to the center as Wabo finds a shot in the defense there once more as Kadith will find another solid save jordan looks to carry out but again at midfield oh, and bishop guilfoyle is doing a great job of swarming this ball oh they really are i mean look at Xavo just keeping the possession to himself for such a long time but he's not able to maintain it and if he can just get that part figured out this game would get a lot more competitive at the moment it is pretty competitive he only got a one goal lead for bishop guilfoyle can they get that insurance goal or will it be equal will it be the equalizer coming in from California area? 
Yeah, I mean, regardless of the outcome, California undefeated on this season. Uh, even if they suffer a loss here, two games, two overtimes, a player down, it certainly speaks volumes to the skill that you guys have left on the field here today. So uh, regardless of the outcome, heads held high here. 90 seconds on the clock. Bishop Guilfoyle still up by one, and Kadith on the attack once more. A nice little razzle-dazzle chip over the top, but it doesn't stop there. Exwobo! My, oh, my! They do it yet again! And it's a, and it's off of such an amazing pass coming in from Jordan. He just bounces it, sends it on to the other side of the field. Xavo up in the air, reads the play perfectly, makes the most a soft touch possible, and gets this one into the back of the net. Exactly what you need here if you're a fan of California area because they've tied up this game number three. With only a minute remaining, they're looking to take that second goal, getting it past two players. Matt YT, however comes in with the final touch, sends it into the corner, looking to pick this one up. Midfield, the touch leads it back to Ixavo as he puts in a threatening shot on target opportunity to take the second goal lead. Goes and miss as the ball goes high. Great save coming in from Kurt as they keep this equalizer maintained. Yeah, California is doing a great job out here with being a player down. Absolutely loving the storyline they're trying to write at the moment here. And uh, you know, if anything, these other teams have to realize how much of a threat they're going to be in this upcoming postseason. Kadeth knocks him away, nearly gets the goal, but Kurt is going to be able to power this one in. 30 seconds left on the clock, and California will once more be chasing that goal for overtime. They've done it before, and with 30 seconds, they still have plenty of time to do it again, but a bit of a physical bump coming in from Guilfoyle will leave them a little more to be desired at the moment. Would not want to be caught off guard again with those physical aggressive plays. It's a shot on target coming in from Guilfoyle. Gotta be careful of that second man, which he is. Xavo looking for this lead back. Kurt to beat, and he's just a bit of a stone wall right in front of the Guilfoyle target. Your man YT puts this one down center for his team. Xavo gets the intercept, goes up high. Kurt, does he get the touch? No, he doesn't. It's the waterfall down. <laughs> Guilfoyle drops it right in front of the orange net. And with a one goal lead, Guilfoyle will take game number three. Yeah, I mean, it's such a close game number three. The first two games going to the way of overtime, ball possession, field domination equal at 50% here as well. And like I said, it just speaks volumes for this California team. And uh, again, certainly winning over the hearts coming out here. It, it, it's easy for a team to go ahead and forfeit. But, you know, they come out here, they play anyway in a 2v3, and they do a phenomenal job. So hats off to California as well. Congratulations to Bishop Guilfoyle getting their second win on the season as well. And again, just trying to make things a little bit better before we head into that postseason. Absolutely, and the postseason is right along the shorelines. It's not that far away. All of these teams are readying up to find out who's going to be the best performer in the playoffs. But a bit of a recap here. We saw Penn Trafford going up against Uniontown early on with Penn Trafford coming out on top. Windmill versus Richland did result in a forfeit, so Richland is going to be taking that by California area and Bishop Guilfoyle, the match that we just noticed is going to be California, rather Bishop Guilfoyle coming out on top with a 3-0 clean sweep. Very well played all the teams today, but I believe that is going to be it for the Rocket League action here on the Division 1 stream. We still got plenty of action in Div Division 2, so if you want more Rocket League, be sure to hop on down there. But this is, is, going, to, this is going to be it for Division 1 here on Tech High School Series. We will see you next time.